Yellowstone, new thermal areas have been discovered. This is on the latest Caldera Chronicles USGS update announcement today, April 1st. Well, we know that in the previous announcements, they said that they were trying to map, trying to locate all the hydrothermal areas in Yellowstone. And uh, it has not done, it has not been done up to now because there are so many. There's over 10,000 of them. So uh, they're in the process of trying to find out where all these are. All these geyser basins everywhere. And uh, they've told us that they estimate that Yellowstone alone has over 60% of the world's geysers. There are other geysers in the United States in other volcanic areas. For example, in Valles Caldera in New Mexico, in uh, the Long Valley Caldera in California, and other areas. Plus we have Iceland and other areas. Iceland has a very, very nice, uh, wonderful picturesque geysers as well. The biggest one here in, in Yellowstone, the tallest one, is the steamboat geyser that has been showing a lot of activity since last year, March 2018. But now they've come out with new thermal hotspots that have been found. They say discovering new thermal areas in Yellowstone's dynamic landscape. That's what they're doing. Yellowstone, Yellowstone uh, Observatory, Yellowstone uh, Caldera Chronicles that come out uh, every week. Yellowstone's thermal areas are the surface expression of the deeper magmatic system. And they are always changing. They heat up, they cool down, and they can move around. A recent spectacular example was the September 2018 emergence of a new thermal feature, an eruption of the long dormant ear spring geyser in the upper geyser basin near Old Faithful. Ear spring geyser near Old Faithful. Even more impressive was the expansion of heated ground in the back basin of the Norris geyser basin in 2003. The heated ground. Norris geyser is where we have the steamboat geyser that goes off, the biggest geyser in the world. So these sorts of changes are part of the normal life cycle of thermal areas in Yellowstone National Park, where the supervolcano is, of course. Recently, they say, we have discovered another phenomenal example of thermal change the emergence of an entirely new thermal area, which has taken place over the past 20 years. And you can read all about the new feature, how it was discovered, and we go to the uh, Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. And that's where it is. Discovery of the new thermal area in Yellowstone's dynamic landscape. Here we have one of the maps by USGS, and you can see the Yellowstone Lake and the thermal areas in red. Caldera outline in black line. And the resurgent dome is in the dashed lines. You can see the Snow Creek Dome and the, uh, the other dome, the uh, Lake Dome next to that on the right. On the left, sorry. Now, um, it's been growing, it looks like, from the comparison of 1994 Turn Lake Thermal Area to 2006 and 2017. It looks like the um, thermal areas from spatial resolution imaging shows that the Turn Lake area from 1994, 2006, 2017, the area of bright pixels identified in the Landsat 8 thermal infrared image corresponds to newly emerging areas of warm ground and tree kills, about eight acres or four soccer fields in the area. So what happens also at the same time it's so hot underneath, it kills the trees. Now, this air photo from 2006 shows the beginning of the tree kill zone. The black and white air photo from 1994 shows no evidence of a newly emerging thermal area 
lakes are outlined in blue, known thermal areas are outlined in red, and the uh, red triangles are individual thermal features that have been mapped. So, the update on the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, the weekly column, written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which is in the park. This week's contribution is from R. Greg Vaughn, research scientist with the U.S. Geological Survey. Yellowstone's thermal areas are the surface expression of the deeper magmatic system, and they are always changing. They heat up, they cool down, they can move around. A recent spectacular example was the September 2018 emergence of the new thermal feature, an eruption of the Long Dorman Ear Spring in the Upper Geyser Basin near Old Faithful. And even more impressive was the expansion of the heated ground in the back basin of the Norris Geyser Basin in 2003. These sorts of changes are part of the normal life cycle of thermal areas in Yellowstone National Park. We have recently discovered another phenomenal example of thermal change, the emergence of an entirely new thermal area which has taken place over the past 20 years. First, a little background. A thermal area is a contiguous geological unit that includes one or more thermal features like fumaroles, hot springs or geysers, surrounded by hydrothermally altered ground, hydrothermal mineral, mineral deposits, geothermal gas emissions, heated ground and or lack of vegetation. There are more than 10,000 thermal features in Yellowstone, most of which are clustered together in about 120 districts, distinct thermal areas like the Upper Geyser Basin, the Norris Geyser Basin. One such area is called the Turn Lake Thermal Area and is located in the central part of the park along the northeast margin of the Sour Creek, the Sour Creek er er Resurgent Dome. On the map here, it's on the upper uh, right-hand side. It's named after nearby Turn Lake and West Turn Lake. And this area is deep in Yellowstone's backcountry, about half a mile from the nearest trail and about 11.2 miles from the nearest trailhead. Therefore, few people have visited this site. Indeed, many of the Yellowstone thermal areas are located in very remote and un inaccessible areas of the park. This is why Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists use satellite-based thermal infrared remote sensing to help map the locations of thermal areas and their changes through time. Landsat 8 thermal infrared images are a great resource for examining thermal areas, especially when the temperature-sensitive images are acquired at night when the contrast between thermal areas and unheated ground is the highest. Analysis of Landsat 8 nighttime thermal infrared image acquired in April 2017 revealed an unexpected warm area between West Turn Lake and the previously mapped Turn Lake thermal area. This mysterious patch of bright pixels in the thermal infrared image did not match any previously mapped thermal areas. Could it be a lake? At night, lakes are warmer than the surrounding land and stand out in thermal infrared images, but only if they are liquid and not frozen. All of Yellowstone's lakes without significant thermal input stay frozen throughout the winter, but the lakes can start to thaw in April. In fact, this appears to be the case in the April 2017 image. Some of the lakes are clearly frozen, dark pixels in the thermal infrared. For example, White Lake and uh, Turn Lake. But West Turn Lake appeared to be starting to thaw. This may have been because the lake was receiving thermal water from nearby hot springs. But that new bright area between West Turn Lake and the previous map Turn Lake thermal area was not a lake. So what was it? High resolution airborne visible images held the answer. The National Agriculture Imagery Program, NAIP, administered by USDA's Farm Service Agency, acquires, high, acquires the high-resolution 
that's 0 0.5 to 1 m pixel area imagery over the continental U.S. every few years. The most recent image of Turn Lake region from 2017 reveals a very large area of dead trees and bright soil, rather like a thermal area. The NAIP, NAIP imagery from 2006 shows a similar zone barren of vegetation and the beginnings of a tree kill zone with many reddish brown trees among healthy green ones. The 1994 air photos, while black and white and lower spatial resolution, clearly show that this was once an area of healthy trees with no hint of a thermal area. Other historical imagery that have been analyzed indicate that this thermal area started forming in the late 1990s or early 2000s, and it's also notable that between 2006 and 2017, there was an increase in the size of tree kill zone on the north side of the previously mapped Turn Lake thermal area. So from all these satellites and aerial images, we conclude that a new thermal area has emerged in the past 20 years. The newly emerging thermal area, located at, at latitude 44.6635 north and longitude 110.279 west, can be seen using Google Earth. In fact, using the time slider tool in Google Earth, one can see how this area has changed since 1994. You can see the changes in the vegetation and the emergence of the thermal area yourself. The recognition of the new thermal area is a great example of the importance of satellite thermal infrared imaging, especially images acquired at night, for mapping Yellowstone thermal areas, including both the discovery of new hotspots and changes in existing areas. This is exactly the sort of behavior we expect from Yellowstone dynamic hydrothermal activity, and it highlights that changes are always taking place, sometimes in remote and generally inaccessible areas of the park. We will continue to keep an eye on Yellowstone using satellite imagery and report on any changes we see in future Caldera Chronicle articles. And if you're interested, you can check out the Landsat 8 data and airport airborne NAIP images for yourself. All images are freely available on Earth Explorer USGS. So, I would say, okay, you know it's there. Now go send your geologist to have a field trip there and observe it with your own eyes. What is it? Uh, of course, they have to be very careful just in case there is a lake underneath the soil. My goodness, uh, you know, anything is possible out there because it's so close to the lakes anyway. It could be something very soft. So this is a, a huge development, isn't it? If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.